see myself more as a photographer versus an environmentalist in that I do understand the environmental movement, but the work I wanted to do, I wanted to have it more open to reading. I wanted the meaning to be a more of a floating point so one can appreciate it as a work of art or one can see it as uh, an example of resource extraction or industry. I wanted to have many ways in which you could enter into the work. Well, I'm really excited about receiving the Outstanding uh, Contribution to Photography Award uh, offered by Sony. It, it somehow validates a 40-year project that I've been traveling around the world to try and show the impact that humans are having on the planet. Actually growing up, you know, in a blue collar town, uh, St. Catharines, General Motors was the employer of that town. It's during that time that I got to see industry firsthand as a young child. I think as I went through photography school and wanted to think of, well, where do I, you know, focus my camera? I thought that looking at industry and looking where things come from and going to those places where our resources are extracted would be something that would be interesting for me. In the making of the three films uh, with uh, Jennifer Bachewell and Nick Deponcier, it really allowed me to understand the power of the documentary film and that there's ways in which that story can be told that the still um, can't really you know, do. But the actual film allows the viewer to be carried through a narrative to really see firsthand you know, these places and how they operate and hear the voices of the people who are working there and to understand the story in a more comprehensive way. I'm delighted that Ed Brutinsky has uh, been chosen for this prize. Uh, I suspect that experts would say um, he won it because he's a photographer's photographer. Uh, he's simply the best at his craft. It's so much more than the beauty and the craftsmanship because there's a real power in uh, his narrative of photography. He expresses things and emotions for which most of us just simply don't have the right words. Uh, and consequently, he speaks to a very large audience and he does so with real integrity. Most of my shoots are usually thought about in, in a sequence to my own work in that I've been slowly kind of moving through a whole series of ideas around energy extraction, mineral extraction, the industry to convert all of that into products, and I've looked at that. And I haven't really focused on that section where we consume. So I've not really looked at cities and life and consumption as a theme. I've kind of left that out and then I've moved to the third phase, which is the waste stream and where things go and the end of life of the things that we use in a consumer society. It is political. It, it, it provokes us into thinking about what we're actually doing and why we're doing it and what the ripple effects of it are on this planet that we're living on. And it, it insists on reconsideration of our behavior and our values and um, I deeply appreciate that, that your work has essentially been an advocate for us to pay attention to the damage that we're doing to this, to this planet that we live on. His work is, uh, for the last uh, 25, 30 years, has been outstanding. And, you know, he's, um, he treats the subject with the, with the importance it deserves. And he's uh, a very astute about how he approaches the subject. He doesn't do it in a, in a cringing way. He, he, you know, he actually makes some of these environmental disasters um, look beautiful. It kind of creates a conflict in the, in the viewer between uh, something, a photograph that's aesthetically uh, pleasing, but at the same time, a horrific situation. And I think it's exactly the type of effect he wants us to have because there is always a conflict uh, when it comes to environmental issues. Well, technology, on the one hand, it's been a real challenge to move from 
the beginning of my career as an analog photographer doing 4x5 and 8x10, which really taught me a lot about discipline and methodologies and contemplation and really being very critical about what it is you're photographing. Moving to digital where there is no commitment to materiality, it's a digital file, if you don't like it, you just delete. So it makes it far more easy to make images um, without a commitment to material. But at the same time, it took me a while to get comfortable with the digital medium. And then once I became comfortable with it, I found it very flexible. It's really exciting to put the exhibition for Somerset House. There's going to be over a dozen images uh, that we've selected that somehow you know, bring together over decades the different things and themes that I've photographed. And, um, and I'm hoping that the, that collection will, even though it's a small grouping, will allow the viewer to really get a sense of how I approach my subject and the things that I find interesting and how I compose and how I use color. Well, it's, it's a remarkably full and long career, dating from the late 1970s to the present, and he's still going strong. Uh, there's a long list of individual projects, all extremely well conceived, executed, and completed, and all hang together aesthetically, uh, conceptually, and they together they come into what what we often call an oeuvre, which is sometimes with photographers, it's a little, it's a word which is a little pretentious. But in Ed's case, I think it's, it's thoroughly deserved. What I'm trying to show is the fact that we are in a overreach. As a, as a species, we've gone too far and that all of these things speak to, in a way, a lament of a loss of nature that our success has pushed back biodiversity. At the same time, you know, to show it to you in a way that has an aesthetic that allows you to enter those worlds and to really contemplate them. Edward, this is a magnificent award and you more than deserve it. I think the world needs to both see and to hear the real insights you bring. Can't wait to see what more uh, comes to us through your lens. Congratulations, all the best.